So welcome to another Photoshop manipulation tutorial. This is Andre from psdbox.com and today we're going to make this manipulation. This is the end result of this uh, tutorial. And the text tutorial is already on the website. You can see it here, the final result and here are the stock images that I used just as the other tutorial that I made. All the links to the stock images are on the website and here you have all the steps with all the exact color values and explanations and I think it has 12 steps yes and I will try to follow this um, text tutorial so but this will be just like a walkthrough not a really detailed tutorial but I'll try to do my best anyways so we will start from this this is our background and we will start from the bottom I replaced this guy with another stock image which is this and I will make I will start a new document to show you how I made this so I'll first you should open your landscape image as you can see it has here the address of the author of this stock image this is a free stock image from DeviantArt I used the the full resolution of the image just I cropped it because I wanted to remove that credit um, part so I selected the image like that and then I went to image crop and that's how I got how I deleted that part there and then I went and opened the storm at sea stock image also a free stock image from DeviantArt I Select it all with Control A. Also, you can do that from Select All, and then go to Image to Edit, Copy, or Control C. Close it with Control W and paste it with Control V. As I said, I'm using the the full scale of the images. As you can see, the canvas is. Uh, you can see the dimensions here. You can scale it down if you have a slow computer or for any reason you want to work with a smaller document and then just place the image like that you can and once you have the the C on top of the background just uh, move it to place it however you want you can decrease the opacity if you want to see the 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 rocks there so and once you have it placed where you want it it can change the name i think i i think i named this C i'm not sure I will see it in a second. Anyways, as I said, you can follow the text tutorial and I there you can see the names of the of the layers and everything. And then you create a layer mask from this icon here. And then you get a soft brush, set hardness to 0 and increase the size to to whatever size you want to have depending on the size of your canvas set the color to black make sure the opacity and the flow are to 100 percent and just start masking these rocks here and get rid of those hard edges and then you can move this around and place it however you want it and make fine adjustments with the brush and switch colors if you want to reveal the original image and that's how I got the background so I'll now close this so this is our background it's very simple it's very easy to to create this and then I started to make some adjustments as I usually do first I started with the rocks layer I used hue saturation to desaturate the rocks as, as you see I I reduced the saturation to minus 50 and then I put a gradient map with black and white to make to increase the contrast as you can see it adds a bit of contrast and also removes a bit of color and the blend mode that I used for this is soft light at opacity of the layer at 30 percent and then on the C layer I created an, a new adjustment layers in this case a levels adjustment layer as a clipping mask because I only want to affect the sea and the sky 
and the only reason why I added this is to add a bit of contrast to this to the water as you can see before and after it adds a bit of contrast and these are the values on the website you have them if you want to add the, ex the exact values and after that I just pasted the woman again I think I used the full scale I'm not sure to crop this I use the pen tool as usually I always use the pen tool just grab the pen tool set the mode to path and just start well first unlock the layer create a layer mask for it and just start drawing path a path around the edges I'm not going to do that now but I'm just uh, showing you how I did this and when I got to the hair usually I I do something like this and when I got to areas like this where it's hard to follow the edges I leave some space there and I use the layer mask for that so when you're done obviously you would uh, follow the all the edges of all of this dress and but I'm not going to do that now close the pad right click and choose make selection click OK and I think it, the selection is inverted, but anyway, fill that selection with black. Yep, I will invert it with Control I. And well, of course, all this background would be would be removed. But grab the brush tool and just start masking this. And when I get close to the edges, I get one of these uh, brushes here. Increase the size zoom in and start masking like that and for this particular tutorial I used another stock image to to fix this uh, really nasty edges here so this is what I do, I'll close this image now of course you can use any extraction method that you like but I always use the pen tool because it's more accurate so this is uh, what I got as you can see the edges are not really good but I will show you how to fix that with another stock image. As you can see the edges are really clean. That's why I like to use the pen tool. The edges are really nice and sharp. Also here on the dress. So that's why I like to use the pen tool. It takes more time but for me it's better. So once I have the woman in the background this is the manipulation the structure as I would call it it's uh, ready and all you have to do now is just start adding shadows I always uh, add shadows because shadows make the scene a lot more realistic and I al already explained how I create shadows but I will show you now how I created this uh, ground shadows so I will disable this layer create a new one and I will show you how I did that First you select a normal brush, set the hardness to like 30% uh, or something like that. Set a medium size. Again, the size depends on your canvas, but 100 pixels in my case uh, is okay. Set color to black. Set the opacity to about 50% and the flow as well, 50%. Zoom in and I'll have to decrease the size 50 pixels and just start painting along the along the edges where the dress uh, touches the, the rocks and you can see how you create those soft shadows maybe you can even increase the hardness to 50% or something like that or decrease the brush size. It's just a matter of adjusting the settings of the brush as you go. And you just have to create these shadows on the just on the edges as you can see I'm doing here. And also here. Make a few passes and And 
and I will now disable this so you can see that even with these shadows uh, it looks a lot more realistic so before and after without these shadows looks like um, the dress is floating in the air or something like that so once you have these uh, shadows on the edges increase the brush size set hardness to zero and decrease the opacity to like 25 percent these are the values that I use the most but you can adjust the settings to whatever you want but these are the values that work for me in most cases and now paint around the dress maybe I painted too much, I'll increase the brush size so these are, these are the ground shadows that you've seen So before and after I will delete this and this is the original I even added too many shadows but anyway then I created a new set of shadows which I, I named body shadows and I will enable this layer so that you can see how it looks I added shadows on the dress itself so I will disable this and show you how to do that so you have to create a new layer and right click on it and select create clipping mask layer and you should have it like this change the name if you want and with the same opacity and flow at 25 percent just start painting over the dress on the lower part where it touches the ground and also here you can decrease the opacity if you think it's too strong and make several passes okay and this is how it looks before and after this is the original before and after so those are the bo the body shadows uh, I think this is step step 4 on step 4 and step 5 you can find this how to make this uh, shadows and then I started to make adjustments to the to the woman just like I made for the background I will skip these two layers for now so you can next you can add a curves adjustment layer also as clipping mask and you can see the values here the reason why I added curves is because I wanted to to reduce the um, highlights a bit uh, I reduced the highlights and this is the before and after you can see on the face and here on the on the arms that it has too many highlights so I decrease the highlights a bit and then I use the hue saturation also as clipping mask to desaturate the image and again I I use like minus 50 you can use minus 50 so you should have it like like this so you have the woman the body shadows and two adjustment layers and once you have the adjustment layers and you desaturate the colors of the woman you can start fixing those the edges of the hair and you can find that on step 7 I used another stock image for that also from DeviantArt it's a PSD file and when you open it you will find actually let's leave that background there you will find this group here with all this uh, painted hair and it's really easy to use just I don't know which one I selected let's get this one brown so you unselect all the other layers so you can do that with the alt key and press the eye icon and everything else will disappear except the layer that you selected select all with control A or select all and then go to edit copy and go to your document and you can paste it you can paste this here on a new layer it's you don't have to put this as a clipping mask just a normal layer and you can call it hair if you want and just place it where you want rotate it 
and you can scale it down if you want just place it wherever you want and then press enter and then create a layer mask to this get the brush tool with the soft brush make sure the opacity and flow is at 100 percent and hardness of the brush is to zero increase the size and just start blending this hair like that once you have the layer mask so you can uh, place this wherever you want just make sure you don't see those edges because this is what we are trying to hide rotate it even more and once you have it to where you want go to make sure you select the uh, image not the layer mask and go to image adjustments hue saturation in this case we're not going to use a adjustment layer because this is this will be a permanent uh, edit so you can you can use a, an adjustment from the menu and just play with the hue until you get a red color like the hair of the model and once you're done increase the saturation and decrease the lightness so you have to play with this uh, values here until you you match the color and the luminosity of the the hair of the model something like that okay and when you're done press OK and we have a part of it then you can duplicate that one or you can select another piece of hair from here this hair stock is really is really good it's really well painted it's painted by hand so edit copy and just paste another one there scale it down if you want make sure you press I press shift to constrain the proportion so I'm not squeezing it like that and resize it rotate it just like the other one and place it there for example and that way we hide all these nasty edges here and just as before create a layer mask get the brush tool paint with black to blend the edges like that let's move it there and again select the image go to to the menu select the adjustment hue saturation and make it red increase saturation, decrease lightness increase saturation even more this one is a bit more difficult to match so I will also use levels okay something like that but it's too saturated so I will desaturate it more or less but with more time you can you can do this right so this is how it looks with the fixed hair and I will merge this and this is the before and after and now I will show you the original that I have I have it in this group and in this case I have I have three layers because I duplicated one but it does the same thing so with the hair ready as I said you can find this on step 7 how to do this it's the exact process that I showed you now and once you have the hair fixed you can move to the dodging and burning this is something that I like a lot to do in all the manipulations that I do and this is how I do it actually I have an action for this if I press control shift and F3 you can see I create a new layer with the naming and blend mode and everything but you can do that you can create a new layer of course as a clipping mask and then go to edit fill and on the contents you set 50 percent gray click OK and then set the blend mode to overlay and you will get the same thing that I have here and just rename it and once you have that layer get the dodge tool 
set the exposure to 10% or something like that set the range to mid tones and then just zoom in and start with the dodge tool start going over all the highlights oops 60% is too much I said 10% okay and just adjust your brush size to the area that you're painting and just go over the highlights in this case you don't have to go too much over the face because it it already has a lot of highlights so like here over the eyes nose the lips as well I spent like half an hour doing dodging and burning I like it a lot so you just like painting with light 10 is too much, let's put it to 8% so you have to adjust the exposure and the brush size all the time but just start going over all the highlights that you see on the on the image it can be time consuming but I like it and you can get some pretty amazing results as you will see in a second because I will not go into spend too much time here I just want to show you how I did it so go over all the highlights also here on the dress all these highlights here increase this exposure here and go over all these highlights so you just have to, to take your time and go over all the areas and remember that we are just working on the on the woman's body I have this as a clipping mask so if I want to dodge here nothing happens because this is a clipping mask so it only affects the areas that are over the woman's body once you're done with the highlights switch to the burn tool set range to mid tones again and again play with the exposure values but 10, 8, 10 to 15, something like that works well. And go over the shadows. Darken this part of the face. 10% is too strong for the face. Here on the neck, on the shoulders. And just everywhere where you see all the all these shadows, go over all those shadows here on the on the hands as well. And especially here on the dress, I spent a lot of time on the dress because it has a lot of folds and a lot of contrast areas where you have to go over all of them. The more you spend here, the better result you will get. But it's up to you. Let's see a before and after. Before and after. It's not a big change. Let's see here on the face. Before and after. So you can see that we already get some something there. Once you're done, you can duplicate that layer if you want a stronger effect and then just reduce the opacity to until you have something you like. I will delete the layers and these are the original ones with all the details so before and after you can see it's a pretty significant change before and after and I'll switch to normal so you can see everything that you see here in white is where I use the dodge tool and the darker areas is where I use the burn tool so switch back to overlay and then I duplicated the layer because I wanted an, an even stronger effect maybe it's even too strong and reduced the opacity to like 60% so this is the dodging and burning on the woman's body and then I did the same for the background I created two more layers just like that using that action that I said I have you can do the same from edit fill and fill with 50% gray and switch to overlay and just start dodging and burning here on the on the sea on the rocks 
I'll switch to normal so you can see where I where I use this. So everywhere here on the sky, especially here on the sea, on those waves and on the rocks here. I'll switch back to overlay. And you can see I duplicated this and the second one I put it to soft light because it's a softer effect, but it does the same. Soft light. And I put it inside a group and now I can disable it and you can see how it looks before and after again it adds more drama and more contrast and I think it looks better so this is how you dodge and burn I actually have a special tutorial only for this it's part of the manipulation secret series if you go to tutorials manipulation secrets and here it's uh, dodging and burning with a lot of examples and Oops, let's go back with examples and showing how to use this uh, technique so we're almost done with this the dodging and burning is the most time-consuming part of the of the this manipulation and also cutting the the woman using the pen tool but as I said you can use any method that you like so I have the main light here on this part and I want to add a bit more darkness here so I use the a gradient and this is how I created that this shadow here it's a very um, smooth shadow using a gradient I went to this adjustment icon and chose gradient and from this list I chose black to transparent if you have another color here just cancel reset the colors to black and white and go again to gradient choose black to transparent click OK set the angle something like this and then you can play with the scale I think 100% is okay and we just you can click and move this gradient wherever you want place it where you like make sure it, the style is linear and click OK and then just uh, reduce the opacity and this is the before and after it adds a bit of shadows here on the back I will delete this this is the original and then I created some mist which I misspelled here it's with I so this I added this mist uh, effect here it's really easy to do just create a new layer get the brush tool increase the size set hardness to zero set the opacity and the flow to 100 percent switch to color white and just paint a few lines like that play with the sizes and then go to filter motion blur and set angle to zero and increase the distance and you can apply it uh, two or three times if you want and then just reduce the opacity and there you have it, you have some mist there this is the original then I added another adjustment layer, in this case a vibrance and I increased the vibrance and decreased the saturation so you can see it removed a bit of color here from the water and also it reduced the colors in general a bit and then to create the final result I created a stamp and for that you have to select the top layer the topmost layer and press Control, alt shift and E and you can see here on history I created a stamp of all the visible layers and I just changed the name to final result and for Mac users I don't remember the combination I have it here in the text tutorial you can see it mm, command option shift and E I'm not a Mac user so and with this I turned it into a smart object you don't have to turn it into a smart object but I want to have that because I I will apply a filter now and you'll see why I want to have that and then go to once I turn this into a smart object, go to filter, 
render lighting effects. I just love this filter. I always use it. For my final results and just increase the size and the direction is the direction where the main light comes from which as I said it's here on the top. Place it somewhere like that. Increase the size. Also you can make it wider or narrower if you want more of a vignetting effect and in most of my manipulations a value of 12 or 13 usually works well so I'll leave it at 12. The material option is to add more contrast uh, you can see it here add more of a mist effect but I, in this case I think I put it to like 90 or something like that I don't remember the exact values as I said you can watch the text tutorial and here you have the exact values and if you have too many highlights you can decrease the shine you can make it mate or shiny this affects the highlights I'll click OK and this is how it looks and see the before and after before and after and the reason why I use smart object is because now I can double click here and adjust the settings if I don't like something I can for example uh, increase the make it more increase the contrast here or make it wider or decrease the, the intensity and click OK and it applies it also you can reduce the opacity if, if for example the vignetting is too strong or the light is too strong you can also reduce the opacity and reveal the layers below but anyways you can see the the result that I got it's very similar so so this is how I got this I hope you like it and if you have any comments you can post a comment on YouTube or on my website and I'll try to help you